In this video, we're going to learn why and when using namespace STD is considered a bad practice in C++. So very often, the first program that a new C++ programmer will see is a hello world program. And it might look like this, C out, hello world, followed by an end line. And typically speaking, there'll be a using namespace STD statement at the top of the file. And whether the student is learning from a textbook or a teacher or an online course or a tutorial, very often there'll be some kind of statement like, this just needs to be there, or this just needs to be there so that we can use C out like this. So if we don't have using namespace STD, we would have to have STD colon colon C out in order to make C out work to output hello world. And that's because of the way namespaces work in C++. When we say using namespace STD, what we're doing is bringing all of the names inside of that namespace into the global namespace. So we can just use them. If we don't say using namespace STD, in order to access things in the standard namespace, we have to say STD colon colon before using them. So learning C++ and computer programming is already pretty tough for most people. Generally speaking, teachers and other learning resources will try to make things simpler for students when they can. Namespaces are something that are more relevant for very large programs, especially when those programs are written by many people. Namespaces are much less relevant for small programs written by one person. They're also not really relevant for new learners that are trying to figure out the absolute basics so things like control structures and object-oriented programming, for example. So that's one big reason why you'll see using namespace STD in many examples online, including many of my own that are targeted at students that are learning the basics of C++. Another reason why you'll see it used is that it's just easier to not have STD colon colon in front of things like C out. It's just less typing. So let's talk about why it's a bad practice in larger programs. To do that, Let's first remind ourselves how namespaces work and why we use them with a small example. We'll say here, namespace ns1. And we'll create a namespace called ns1. And inside the ns1 namespace, we'll define a function called func1. And the func1 function will just output that it's func1 inside of the ns1 namespace. And then we'll copy this and we'll paste it. And we'll create another very similar namespace called ns2. ns2 is also gonna have a function called func1, but this time the function will output that it's func1 inside the ns2 namespace. Now what's really important about this is that we have two functions called func1, and this is okay. This is what namespaces allow. So for example, in our main function, we could say ns1 colon colon func1 and ns2 colon colon func1. And we can call both functions with the same name using namespaces. So if we compile this and then we run it, we're gonna find this works okay. So we should get func1 ns1 and func1 ns2, and we do. So very large C++ programs such as commercial video games, will be made up of many, many lines of code split up across many files. And there's only so many good names to go around. For example, things like sorting or finding the max or min of something, those are very common features to implement. Different parts of our source code may want to use those same names. Namespaces allow us to share and reuse names. By using the scope resolution operator, in conjunction with the name of the namespace, we're able to make it clear which namespace things are coming from. Now, one thing we can do is use a using statement to include all of the names from a namespace into the global namespace. So for example, if we said using namespace ns1, we would no longer have to have ns1 colon colon here. We could delete this save it, recompile our program, and run it, and it's going to work okay. 
And that's because using namespace NS1 brought func1 from that namespace into the global namespace. We're then able to call func1 without using the scope resolution operator. Now we could say that we've polluted the global namespace in the sense that we've just sort of brought everything from NS1 into the global namespace. What if we wanted to define func1 inside of the global namespace? So for example, we could have void func1, and then here we'll have a similar function. We'll output func1, and this time we'll have global, followed by an inline. Now I have func1 defined in the global namespace. At the same time, this using statement here also brought func1 from the NS1 namespace into the global namespace. What's going to happen now? We'll save this and we'll try to compile the program. And here we get an error. It says error call to func1 is ambiguous. The problem here is we have two identical functions in terms of their name, return value, and parameters inside the same global namespace. That's what I mean when I say we polluted the global namespace. Now there are many, many things defined inside the standard namespace. So if we say using namespace STD and we bring all of them into the global namespace, we'll have very heavily polluted that global namespace. So for example, if we include the library algorithm, there's a function template inside this library called min. We can use it to find the minimum of two numbers. So for example, we could say here, C out, and then we'll have min colon, and then we'll use min with the values four and five, followed by an end line. And we'll have using namespace std. So we can save this, compile our program, and then run it, and we get a min of four. And right now, because we have using namespace std, we've brought all the names from that space into the global namespace. So we don't have to use std colon colon with cout or with min, which is also in the standard namespace. Now the problem is min is a pretty common operation. What if we wanna make our own function template min that has the same return type parameters and name as the function template min from the standard namespace? So to save time, I just pasted in this function template called min. And this function template has the same name, return type, and parameters as the function template min defined inside the standard namespace. Now the problem is we're going to have a collision where right here, it's gonna again be ambiguous which function template is being used. So we'll save this and we'll try to compile our program. And we get a very similar error. So if we scroll up here, it says, error call to min is ambiguous. So a very similar problem to what we had before. Now, the reason why I emphasized the parameters and return type also being the same is there's something called function overloading in C++ that also allows us to reuse names. I don't want to get into that in this video, but basically the problem is when we say using namespace STD, we're bringing a lot of things into the global namespace that's going to restrict our ability to use those names in our own ways. Now for smaller projects and example code, this generally speaking isn't gonna be an issue that you'll experience. Where it can become a bigger issue is like I said, in these larger projects written by many people, where people are trying to follow some sort of standard. In particular, it can be really bad to have using namespace STD inside the .h header file of some sort of library that you're including. I'll show you why. So for example, let's say that we don't have this. We don't have using namespace std here. And we'll use std here and std here. To make it clear, we're using cout and nline from the standard namespace. But we're not gonna have std here because we're gonna wanna use our own min function template. 
So we can save this, compile our program, and it's going to work. We can run it, and we get min4. And we're confident that it's our min function template that's being used because we didn't say using namespace std. But let's say there's some library that we're going to include. We'll make it a very small library. We'll say here, number include IO stream, and then we'll have using namespace std in the header. We'll have class simple, and our simple objects are gonna have a member function called func, and we'll provide an implementation of this function in the .cpp file. So this is library.h. Now we're gonna make library.cpp. And the first thing we'll do is include library.h, and then we'll provide a definition of that member function. So we'll say simple colon colon func, and we'll just have the function output func followed by an end line, and we'll save this. Now, over here, let's say we wanna use this library. So up here, we'll just say include library.h. And then down here in our main function, we try to make a simple object instance, and we try to use the func member function. So this seems okay. It doesn't seem like there should be anything wrong with this. So let's try to compile the program. We'll say g plus plus dash o d d dot cpp and then library dot cpp as well. And look at this. We're back to that same error. It says error call to min is ambiguous. That doesn't seem right because we took out using namespace std from our d.cpp file. The problem is we included library.h and library.h does have using namespace std. So that's the problem. If we include using namespace std in a header file, then anything that includes that header file will have the entire standard namespace brought into the global namespace. This becomes an even bigger problem when we have projects made up of many, many files, many of which include and depend on each other. So using namespace std is a really bad thing in a header file. I think this is the biggest reason why people advise not to use it at all. In my own videos, I'm actually going to use using namespace std in videos that cover foundational concepts, because many of the viewers are coming from courses and online tutorials that also are using, using namespace std. And I don't wanna throw them off by doing something different. And it's really not a big deal in small programs, but in videos covering more advanced and applied topics, where it's more likely the viewers are familiar with namespaces, I'm going to switch to not using, using namespace std. Now, what if we don't wanna use using namespace std, but we also don't wanna type std colon colon every time we use something like cout, there is one more thing we could do. So what we'll do here is say using std colon colon cout. This will just bring cout from the standard namespace into the global namespace. So I can just use cout directly like this with no need for using std colon colon as a prefix. We do have to use std colon colon when using endl. And that's because using std colon colon cout is only gonna bring cout from the standard namespace into the global namespace. So we still have to have std colon colon when using endl. Let's delete library.h up here, just to make it clear that cout has been brought into the global namespace from the statement in the main function as opposed to the using namespace std in the library.h file. So we'll compile our program now, and then we'll run it, and we should get hello world, and we do. We would need to do this for each thing we want from the standard namespace, but this does give us another option instead of using the entire namespace. 
Hopefully this video has helped you to understand why and when using namespace STD is a bad practice. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.